Hello guys, welcome back. As you can see, I'm here surrounded by piles of clothes, which is an exciting time for us all. I'm just gonna take my shoes off and fully settle in. Um, I am here today with a review. We need to be straighter than this for this video. This is just not good enough. We're at an angle there. One moment. Okay, now we're going, that feels better. Right, I am here today with a review of all of the testing basics thus far. Well, not quite all of them because I've been doing this for years and years and years now. So maybe let's say most of the ones in the past 18 months. I'm saying most because what I've pulled out here is what truly is a basic. Some testing basics we've done like, um, so like loungewear I haven't included in this roundup whenever I've done like summer dresses or something. Those are ones that I can constantly revisit through the years going forward. This video is proper basics. T-shirts, jeans, some shorts, white shirts, trainers, loafers, blazers. I think that's actually all the categories we've got here. Like the absolute core of your wardrobe. And these are my favorites from all the testing basics of those categories. The ones that have stood the test of time, there's the odd thing which actually hasn't been in a testing basics but is a favourite and gets a big recommendation. So with some things, I'll explain them more specifically when we get to specific examples. I'll explain them more specifically when we get to specific examples. It's not right, is it? <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, if I've found something that I think is a really great, big thumbs up, big recommendation, I don't necessarily then need to go forth and do testing basics on that item because what's the point of me buying four more of something just to prove what I already know, <laughs> basically. So there are some items like that within here too. But, like I said, this is the true core of a wardrobe and let's just start... Let's just start, is all I can say. Let's start with jeans, because it seems like a good place to begin. Um, I think nearly everybody will be a fan of denim at some point in their life or another. I did testing basic straight leg jeans mm, before Christmas. I will link all the videos I'm referring to in the description box as well. Um, I did, did I do 10 pairs in that one as opposed to five? I think I might have done that. I just remember that being a really big video. Anyway. I've got three favourites here that are the jeans that I reach for the most and have consistently reached for the most, in some cases for years now. Two pairs are from Weekday, which is hands down my favourite high street brand for denim. There are some other great ones out there like Everlane do great denim, Cos do, um, Arquette do, but Weekday just has so many styles, so many different sizes. They have something for everybody. If you are stuck for jeans, go to weekday. It's the first recommendation I give to everybody. And my two personal favourite styles from there, which are both kind of straight leg styles, are the Voyage and the Seattle. I'm wearing my Voyage ones right now. They do them in lots of different washes as well. I have the Voyage in this mid-wash, an indigo wash and a black wash. I have the Seattle in this also mid-wash, which is the exact... Oh, it's a bit lighter than the Voyage, maybe. And also an indigo wash. Um, I'll show you the cutouts of these side by side so you can tell the difference. The Seattle is slightly skinnier leg, the um, Voyage has a slight kick flare but only ever so slightly. It does just look straight leg on the body. Um, it's just They're just brilliant jeans for the price. I will never stop ranting and raving about them. They wash so well. These particular Voyage ones I've had for over a year. These Seattle ones I've had since I did that testing basics. Um, and yeah, they've just been through the wash so so many times i try not to wash denim but if i spill something on them then they'll go in the wash um and these just come out no problem they the quality of the denim's great the fit is great of both of these particular styles the price is great i can't rant and rave about them enough they consistently just get the biggest thumbs up from me so that's two styles from weekday and then i have one pair here from levi's um, these are the cropped 501s, so these aren't vintage 501s, you can buy these, these are current stock Levi 501s, which will be music to lots of people's ears, because finding the vintage ones it can be so difficult. Um, and while they say they're the cropped style, don't let that put you off, I'm about 5 foot 8, and they're the perfect length on me. Again, have them in this dark, um, this washed black, and I have them in like a blue wash as well. But they're just really, 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 really great. Um, they kind of fit 
in between the, the Seattle and the Voyage. They're slightly more straight than the Voyage, slightly wider than the Seattle. Um, and things like the way that they have the button-up fly is a detail I always really like on jeans. They're a really good mid-rise, they fit really well over the bum. Levi's is a brand that has just such a good... Do you know what? I've just been realising this, this particular style wasn't in that testing basics because I did the rib cage in that testing basics that I'm referring to. So these, these I prefer to the rib cage. I got these after that testing basics, I'm just remembering now. Um, and I prefer these, I prefer the 501 cropped. Um, they fit really well over the bum and the rib cage ones were just too short for me, which is what I was saying a lot throughout that video. These are a much better length. Um, and they just, they're just so flattering. And Levi's is a brand for denim that has such a big name behind it for a really good reason. Like they do really, really, really good jeans. Um, from the vintage ones that you can go find in your local shop and also the current stock as well. So these big thumbs up. I have a waist 26 in all of the styles that I just mentioned. I'm just double checking that with these. Where's the sizing? It's not on the back anymore. Um, I'll confirm that in the description box, but I'm pretty sure. No, actually, I'm telling a lie. I have a waist 25. Waist 25, and actually, it'll be a waist 25 in these. I do recommend with weekday, yeah, waist 25, going down to the smallest size that you can fit in when you buy them because they do give a little, not much at all, but enough. If you try them on in the shop and you're like, <gasps> can't breathe, get them because they'll then be the perfect fit after, after a few wears. So that was denim. That's the ultimate denim recommendation I can give you. Um, let's move on to t-shirts. So white t-shirts I did over a year ago, definitely now. And again, I did 10 for this one. This one going forward has been a bit of hard on to judge of which my favorites are because I wear a t-shirt most days through when it's warm like this and it's just a t-shirt or under jumpers. Um, and if I'm honest, I just take what's ever on top of the pile and have, become to not be precious at all or really have a favorite brand that where i'm like oh i'm glad this is the one that i'm wearing today i just kind of take what's there wash them all, all the time don't expect them to last all the ones that from that testing basics i still have and i'm still wearing but it's kind of inevitable that eventually they'll start to yellow under the armpits from your deodorant um they'll just start to look a bit worse for wear after a while because it's a white t-shirt and it just i think it's kind of inevitable that that's eventually going to happen so I sort of really racked my brains about which ones I'd recommend the most and ended up deciding three brands. Everlane, this is the Everlane one actually that I have here, I just pulled this out of the wash basket. Um, they're really soft, I also have a black um, t-shirt from them, it's not this one I'm wearing right now, which I really like as well. So they do good ones in different colours, um, so they get a recommendation for a really lightweight, soft cotton t-shirt. Arquette, Arquette do a great lightweight one like that and a great heavier weight one. All of this will be linked in the description box. But that's a good brand to go to if you want something that's really flowing and soft cotton and also something that's a bit more structured. So Arquette for that. Thirdly, Uniqlo U, the men's one in a size small for me. I'm going to show you me wearing one in the cutaway. It's not a white one because I don't have it in white. I have it in different colours. Um, it's a very, very, very heavyweight t-shirt, so I would actually say there would be a place for three different styles in your wardrobe. The Uniqlo U for something very heavyweight and very, it's like a stiff cotton that's quite textured. The Arquette heavyweight ones are very smooth cotton. It looks very smooth on the body as well. And then something like the Arquette lightweight one or the Everlane one, which is a, just a much lighter weight cotton t-shirt basically. All three are just so easy to wear, all look great, but do all feel and look slightly different. They're all at great price points as well. Um, so those are my three for t-shirts. But like I said, I really liked, all. I've worn all of the ones that I did from that testing basics and haven't had any disasters going forward with any of them. Um, they've just been heavily in rotation. So that's t-shirts. Now let's do knitwear. I think you can all guess. Um, when I did cashmere knits, I did have Uniqlo in it, but it was a Uniqlo women's just regular one. The jumpers that I have been wearing the most, honestly, for the past nine months probably, are men's Uniqlo large cashmere jumpers. I have it in two colours, this grey and a navy blue. 
and I am not exaggerating when I say I wear one of these most days. They wash perfectly, you just put them in a wool wash, dry them on the radiator, they barely bobble, and the blue one is somewhere because I had it on yesterday, but they honestly are the best cashmere jumpers I've ever, 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 ever had. And I cannot recommend them enough. So Uniqlo men's, and the women's ones are just as great as well, but I love this oversized fit. It just looks so good and they're so easy to throw on and I wear them around the house and I wear them out and I wear them in every waking moment of the day, basically. So that's men's in a large. Um, if I'm honest, even if you've got a large or an extra large, there's not a huge difference styling-wise. Um, so that's that. And then for non-cashmere knitwear, this under the stories blue one, which I have just taken off the radiator because it's also been in the wash, is, that's why it's inside out, is um, one that I have managed to shrink in the wash in the past and have repurchased. They do, I also have it in the green. Um, I wanted to sort of mention under the stories generally in this non-cashmere knitwear category because they're a really great high street brand for knitwear. Um, I've got quite a few from them that I wear lots. I find, again, they wash really well. They really stand the test of time. And they just kind of match up to any more expensive knits that I've had, if I'm honest. Um, I do have a couple of really pricey knit where I've got some, one from The Row, from Totem. And I love them and, and they do get worn a lot, but the ones from Under the Stories do kind of match up to them. I would say the same for Everlane as well. I have some knitwear from them that I've had for years and have worn so regularly. Um, so, But I specifically wanted to mention this navy blue one from under the stories too which you'll have seen me wear so many times um but as a brand they do some great knitwear on the high street and i've had no as apart from when i messed up myself by putting it in the wash on the wrong setting which is what happened with this one because i can't read basic instructions i've had no serious mishaps with any of the knitwear that's that we're flying through this but i feel like i need to keep the pace up um let's do shirts i did linen shirts last summer I believe the winner was this Uniqlo one. Again, just one of those incredible brands for basics, isn't it? This is also from the men's section. It's a, a white linen shirt. I have this in an extra large. And um, I have two of these because whenever I go on holiday, I wear them so much. I wear them like over bikinis on the beach. I like wearing them with shorts and just nice sandals in an evening. Wearing them in the daytime, wearing them with linen trousers. I wear them when I'm not on holiday with my jeans. I wear them so much, so I, having two, especially when you're taking them on holiday, like one beachy one, one day-to-day -day one, can be very easily justified in my opinion. Um, I have an extra large in this, but like I said with the wear large, extra large, you're gonna get a similar look with them. There's not a huge difference between it. Um, they're just really simple, really well-priced, really nice linen, white linen shirts. There is some yellowing on this one, and again, it's kind of what I was saying with the white t-shirts especially if you're wearing them on the beach with sun cream and things, it's inevitable that after maybe a couple of years you might need to repurchase them because they're just going to look a little bit past it. Um, but they are just great. I love them. I love them. I love them. I, they wash brilliantly. All of the things I keep repeating so much here. Um, so the, these are really sort of the test of time for a linen shirt. For a non-linen option, this is one that I bought just before Christmas from Gap. It's also men's. Um, as you can tell, I'm a fan of menswear. Um, I think for shirts especially, it just has that great oversized look. If you've got a bigger chest like I do as well, you don't get that pulling over the buttons, over the boobs or anything. It just looks really effortless and easy. Um, this one's from Gap. This is one of their cotton shirts. It's very heavy cotton, which is lovely. Um, it would be too hot to wear on holiday, I would say. Maybe on an evening you could get away with it. But it's a great winter shirt. Um, and I've just been so, so, so impressed with it. Once again, wash is great. Also, doesn't really need ironing. I cannot say that for the linen one. Obviously, you can't say that for linen ever. This just kind of comes out of the tumble dryer and I'm like, I can wear this straight away. I don't even need to look at an iron, which is a big thumbs up in my eyes. Um, I have this in a large. Um, and if this one, this exact one isn't available, I can't remember if it is or not, but they do lots of very similar menswear ones and I will link all the similar styles and the similar composition as well in terms of the fabric in the description box because it was a great purchase, really great price again and it's just, I've worn it loads and really like it and I feel like there, there is 
um, justification to have one linen and one cotton shirt in your wardrobe because they do offer quite a different vibe, let's say. I don't really like that word. Okay, we're cooking on gas here. Let's stick with clothes and we'll move on to shoes at the end. Um, tailored trousers, that was the most recent testing basics that I did. There were two winners where I kind of couldn't pick between the two. Um, although I think I just just ended up airing on the side of these ones, which is the Ami straight leg wool tailor trousers. The best tailor trousers I've ever had. Um, the best fit, the best fabric, they're wonderful. I've actually never had them dry cleaned or anything yet, which is probably kind of gross, but I haven't spilled anything on them. And like I said, that's kind of, with trousers, that's when I'm like, this is time now to clean these or if they smelt, which they don't. Um, they're so worth the higher price point. So, so, so incredibly worth the higher price point. Can't recommend them more. I believe they're still available. I'm really hoping they're part of the core collection that they have so that they're always available because I will not stop wearing these. I will not stop singing their praises. But similarly, the Philippa K ones, they're quite a different style, which is why I think that they are both worthwhile pieces to consider investing in. These are more affordable than the Ami ones, but they're still a higher price point. But they are a looser fit. They're more like a crepe material. They're a lot more flowing. They're longer. They're more tapered in the leg. They offer two very different styling. Um, but these are just fantastic. I get so many compliments when I wear these. And I love just throwing them on with a t-shirt and some slides or one of the like Uniqlo jumpers and some trainers and just, it feels so effortless and so good. I love, love, love these. And Philippa K as a brand is one that I'm just becoming more and more and more impressed with if I'm honest. They, I think they're doing some really great stuff and really great stuff for the price point. So those two are still taking the top spot. Um, blazers I haven't done in ages and this is one um, that I don't feel I need to revisit if I'm honest because for all, oh I've just lost my words then I've been speaking so much um, yes it's not one that I really feel like I need to revisit just yet because for me the best place to buy blazers is Arquette they just seem to nail it for the price point they offer loads of different styles, but they're all very classic. So there'll be like a slightly oversized one, a slightly less oversized one, some different fabrics, some different colours, some heavier wool ones, some more like crepe cottony ones. And they're all just a beautiful fit and a beautiful tailoring. So I've been so thoroughly impressed with what Arquette offer with blazers that I have two black ones here of two slightly different styles. Again, I'll show you them side by side in the cutaway that really make me think, kind of ticked that box for now um you know maybe in the future if i want to do linen blazers or something different and never say never i guess but these really do just get a huge recommendation from me and like i just said arquette generally is a as a brand for blazers brand for blazers is quite hard to say um it's just brilliant uh so like i said i've got two here one is slightly more oversized than the other and i also do have it in a bigger size um, I have it in 38 as opposed to a 36 in the more tailored one. But they, they just look great. They're really simple, really classic pieces. They're not so oversized, which, I mean, I really do still love oversized tailoring, but it was definitely more of a trend piece than I would say, like a really classic basic where everyone was wearing very oversized tailoring kind of last autumn specifically and the autumn before. Um, Whereas these are just, they, they, they both just look great. Um, and the detailing on them is lovely. The quality feels lovely. I have worn them both a lot and been hugely, hugely impressed with them. I believe at least one of them hopefully is still available. So I will link it in the description box. But like I say, just Arquette is generally getting a big recommendation from me for their blazers i was going to say tailoring but their tailored trousers sometimes come up too short for me so it's more specifically blazers than tailoring as an entire category oh let's just take a moment and then we're going to talk about some shorts um this isn't a testing basics that i've done i think i might do cotton shorts at some point but again like i was just saying i feel like i've got some really good recommendations here without having to do an entire video that reviews a spectrum of uh, price range um 
Two of them are very recent purchases actually, which are both some nice stretchy waistband, very simple cotton shorts, which are just incredibly versatile. These white ones from COS, which you guys have just loved, and I just keep seeing them everywhere and it makes me really happy because they're brilliant. They're a white cotton short. They sort of have that I'm off to PE vibe, which is very in at the moment. And I really like it. I'm a big fan of it. Um, they're really comfortable. They're just great. Man, really need a wash, actually, looking at them. They're kind of a bit grubby and disgusting because I've been wearing them so much. And then for a slightly darker pair, well, not slightly, a lot darker, we have Everlane here. Um, these are a slightly more, how to describe this? The adjectives are failing me. These are a softer cotton. These are a slightly more silky cotton, let's say. Um, great length. They've just got a really nice little turn up style which is the same as the cos ones it's not turn up i mean just a hem but it makes it's a small detail which just makes them look really good um and they're both both brilliant pairs of shorts that i have been wearing non-stop recently while the weather's been getting better and will continue to wear a lot through summer they're both recent pieces so i'm not giving as much of a long-term review of those two as i have been able to with other ones but um cotton shorts could could be a test in basics to do but at the moment and i had a bit of a look online i just i'm recommending those two i don't know that you need more recommendations than that they're both really 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 good pieces um and for some linen shorts i have these on from Messino, which i had since last summer and um, they're a much higher price point it's quite an expensive brand casino these are just so bloody good i love them um i've worn them loads wash them loads all the same stuff that i keep saying all the time but they're a re really great length they have again the reason i've chosen these alongside these cotton ones is just because by having like the button and the fly they have a slightly more smarter vibe even though they're often a crinkled mess um to these ones which feel really casual um and like they've got belt loops so you can wear a belt with them and just your t-shirt tucked in and it looks really good really effortless um and yeah just offers something a slightly different styling um opportunity to these ones which are very 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 laid back while also being very comfortable and very lightweight and very wonderful and very much worth the price point in my humble opinion so that was those on to footwear i've only got two categories of footwear here um trainers and loafers which seem like my most worn year round pairs of shoes they are both ones that i've done testing basics on in the past loafers i haven't done for years canvas trainers i did last summer for me a canvas trainer is the style of trainer i wear the most more than a leather one um, and the ones that i have are superga had these for probably about four years now um, and they're just great and as a brand i love these they're my favorite canvas trainer brand i would say really comfortable they look really great these are a specific they were like a limited edition one unfortunately so you can't get these exact ones anymore as you can see they are so well loved and even though i did a testing basics on canvas trainers i've still come back to these these weren't in in that one because i've had these for so many years um they, they were in the testing basics originally but like i said probably three four years ago now um but i just keep going back to these over all of the other ones that i featured in that video um and they really have stood the test of time, even though they're disgusting now. Um, and then another pair, which weren't in that testing basics, because I didn't have them at the time, are the Muji canvas trainers. Uh, like, everyone I know wears these. They, the sizing's a bit of a bastard, because they do them in centimetres. I wear the 25 centimetre ones, and I'm a UK size 7. That's the most I can offer in terms of sizing help. Go try them on if you can. Um, or if you're a size 7 get 25 centimeter but I can't really explain it other than that and um, as you can see mine are disgusting um, I did have done too many walks in the countryside in these but they are the comfiest trainers ever they're brilliant they sort of have like a molded sole um, in, inside the shoe whereas with the sole they um, which just makes them unbelievably comfortable I have washed these before you just put them in the wash in a pillowcase. They're starting to crack a little bit around some of the rubber, um, but they're about £20, I want to say. Really affordable, so definitely something you could just repurchase. 
um, and I've probably had these for a year now as well and as you can see they've been worn to death. Um, sorry, my I've run out of memory then for a second on the memory card. Um, but yeah, they haven't obviously haven't lasted as well or as long as the Superga ones. Let us end on some loafers. Now, I have got like my Celine loafers that lots of you will know, which w were, um, they, they were like part of, a, part of a cool collection. You can't get them anymore. And they are probably my favorite shoes I've ever bought, but I didn't want to talk about them here because you can't get them. So I thought I'd focus on a pair, which I have loved so much, which are still available. They are the men's Gucci loafers. I have these in a size seven with an insole in because the men's sizing just makes them a bit bigger and a bit baggier, but they're perfect with an insole. They are the kind of style that you can step down at the back, which is not something I've ever done. Um, these are unbelievably comfortable. Just as soon as you get them, you can wear them with no socks and you'll be fine. And I love them. I love the shape of them. I think, I just think they're so cool. They've worn in beautifully, like the leather it's just worn in so well. I love wearing my black socks. It's kind of the way I style them the most, just with like the these Wheat Day Voyage jeans, white t-shirt, the Arquette blazer, or the white Gap shirt, Arquette blazer, or the um, Miami trousers and one of the Uniqlo knits. There's so many just outfit opportunities just within this pile of clothing. But these are a splurge. I think they're probably over £400. I've um, had them for well over a year and they are well worth that price tag, in my opinion. They are just some of the best loafers I've ever, ever had. Sorry guys, I was just talking about the Gucci loafers very passionately and my camera died midway through a passionate sentence. Um, but yes, I'm pretty sure I was just singing their praises excessively. If you have wider feet, you wouldn't need an insole in them either. Um, I have quite narrow feet and it's just the width of them as opposed to the length that made me need that insole. Uh, but yes, well worth the price tag. And that concludes the pieces in this video. Thank you so much for the person who suggested this. It's also been really useful for me to see the gaps and where to move forward with testing basics. Um, I've kind of felt a bit like, not like I've come to the end of it, but like I'd done more than I actually had. So for the next ones, um, if it's okay with you guys, I'm gonna park cotton shorts for now, just for the reasons I explained. Really recommend those Cos and those Everlane ones. Um, I really wanna do tank tops. They're sold out everywhere. Like, you know, really classic 90s ribbed white tank tops, um, which are just like gold at the end of the rainbow at the moment. They are selling out just like mad. So I'm kind of constantly keeping an eye out for them. So that's on the list. I've just ordered um, lots of underwear to do like a comfy, easy day-to-day -day underwear testing basics. So that one will be the next one that we have. I also really want to do white jeans, just because sometimes, even if to say I was to get a white pair of the Voyage, the wash can make the style fit quite differently. Um, and white jeans, I think, are great for summer and they are such a good, they're another wardrobe essential, I would say. So I would really like to do that one going forward, white denim. Um, maybe little black dresses would be a good one, just again for the summer. Um, what else? There's another one that I thought of before. Oh, maybe white shirts that are, like I said, the Gap one's quite heavy cotton. So maybe like a lightweight cotton white shirt that's neither heavy cotton and neither linen. That also seems like something that's kind of missing. I have one from Under the Stories that I've loved for years actually, but I think the Gap one has completely trumped it. So I would be interested to see what other brands offer in terms of something lighter weight. As always, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Another one we could do maybe lightweight knitwear for um, the summer, you know, like the holiday evenings where you just want to throw something over your shoulders or over your outfit. The possibilities are endless. I hope this has been informative. It feels like a lot of information, um, I would imagine, but I hope this has been a really good overview of what my favorite pieces are for really, really, really basic, just the most basic basics, basically. Wow, basic basics, basically. Maybe that should be the title of this video. I'm also gonna write this up in a blog post um, just because it has been so much information and I will link that in the description box so it's just all there in a way that may, might be easier to scroll through and find links to things if that is what you are inclined to do. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.